Facebook world and flood forum. Uh, my name is Rod Scott. I live here in this beautiful coastal community in Louisiana called Mandeville. And today I'm walking around with Harriet talking about elevating structures. Uh, we're a unique community in that we're coastal Louisiana with no levees. We've had seven hurricanes in 14 years and our community is about 75% elevated now. Uh, we just keep at it, keep at it and keep at it. But a lot of the issues around elevation are pretty much a mystery to a lot of you who are dealing with these flooding issues and, and how do I protect my house and why do I need to and why do I need to elevate and how do I elevate. And so my whole goal in life now that I'm a grandfather and lots of beautiful grandbabies is, is really to educate all of you about this thing called elevation. And so I spent the last 10 years and I'll hopefully get to spend another 20 educating all of you about how this works, but also encouraging you to have a voice. This great thing that you're working in Flood Forum is so wonderful because it's, it's enabling and empowering people who vote to have a voice together collectively. And that is our American system of government. So behind me, you'll see some elevated structures. Uh, they're very high because we're right next to the water and this elevation is maybe about three feet above sea level. That seawall is five feet above sea, uh, sea level. And that water has come over that seawall seven times in 14 years in a big way. And sometimes it just slops over with a big wind. So we have to deal with water. Now, the big confusion nowadays is why are my flood insurance rates going up? Well, Harriet and I were just talking about that and we wanted to share that with you because what's happening now is not really talked about. We're talking about climate change, we're talking about sea level rise, uh, much higher rain events, more rain coming in our events. But what's happening underneath all of that is we have decided to change the flood insurance program. And if your building, your home was built before the first flood map in your community, every community has a different time when that first flood map came in. Ours is mid 70s here, but some communities are as late as 80s or 90s. So you have to know if your building was built before the first flood map or after. If it's after, you're okay because you were built to some flood map standard. But we estimate there's about 3 million buildings out there that are still on the ground near the flood zones or in the flood zones who were built before the first flood map. And a lot of them are our historic buildings. So basically what we've decided to do, because they always get flooded and they d never were charged very much for their flood insurance, when we put the flood insurance program in, they were always subsidized. Now we're down to about 20% of these buildings left in the landscape, 3 million of them in our communities, some with a lot more than others. So they're raising the rates on all these old buildings. And if it's a primary home, it's at 12% a year. If it's a every other building is roughly about 25% a year. So if it's a second home or if it's a rental income property or if it's apartments, multifamily, all those buildings, commercial buildings are going up at 25% per year. So if you're going up at 25% per year, you have seven years left because we're already in year four. If it's a primary home, you have 12 years left until your rates will be the actual risk rate for your building, however high it is in relationship to that flood map. And we should say however low it is because most of the old buildings were built below what the modern flood maps are. So they're raising those rates for the next several years until they go up. The problem is the only way to fix that, especially in a residential structure, is to elevate it, relocate it, or demolish it. I'm in the structural industry, I believe in buildings, I'm a historic preservation person, I'm not going to tear these buildings down. We're going to elevate them or relocate them to lower their flood risk and lower their flood insurance payments. And the problem is, as we were just talking, Harriet and I, as we were walking, is that in 2012, Congress changed the rules for flood insurance and, and they gave us no financial tools. Change the rules, but no financial tools. That should be our slogan. We need some form of large scale financing. This is three million buildings. This is a trillion dollars of construction work in the next 20 years. Um, so we need some sort of long term financing that is very low interest, that can revolve in a community. The loan can be paid back and another one made and another one made so that we can work our way out of this pickle because 
the cost of the insurance is going to drive people from their homes. Uh, so, and those homes on the ground, as we found in Houston area or Texas, three floods in three years, and all those slab on grade homes are flooding. 60 inches of rain, you're never going to build a big enough drainage system to hold 60 inches of rain. The ones that were elevated in Houston, they were dry. So, we want to get them up in the air, we want to help you get them up in the air, and we want to educate you on how to do that with financing and loans, and that's why Harriet dropped by today to, so that we can talk about how we can get some programming for you based on YouTube or something like that to where you can download it anytime, learn about it, learn about the steps of how to do these projects yourself, where there's financing, because you as the property owners are gonna have to make these decisions and we wanna help you. We wanna help you hand that house off to your family or sell it at, at a good value. So thanks Harriet for letting me talk about Elevation today and hopefully there'll be lots more education coming towards you guys uh, after our meetings today. Finish.